All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a wonderful weekend. We're expecting a big move in the stock market this week. We have a bunch of important economic data, a lot of momentum from last week, and finally, we are wrapping up the month with the end of February, about to start March and end out the quarter. So, Jad, we got a lot to talk about. I got a bunch of data, a bunch of info about this week that you need to be looking for, a bunch bunch of different plays, everything from biotech all the way to earnings. We still got a little bit more, but after last week, we have pretty much wrapped earnings up, and then we got to talk about everything else, the other plays, and what we are expecting moving forward. So, Jad, what I need from you, a thumbs up on the video, make sure you're subscribed, and if you don't know, we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open, youtube.com slash the stock market. We are live every day all of these trades everything we go over you can watch it live for free 99 and don't let me forget today is sunday tomorrow is monday i don't have the random account up but what we do on this watch list we ask that you post a random option trade in the comments keep it below 100 post the strike price expiration date all that good stuff and tomorrow morning before the market opens we're gonna do a random play we have a random play count it's struggling right now that's why we need your help so help out and post a good option trade below let's go chad run it baby but right off the bat, before I get into any of the keys, I think it's a good reminder to start with what happened last week. Remember, two weeks ago, we were coming off of negative CPI data. Market came back down a little bit. Well, last week, you got to kind of bounce around that range and then we ended the week with NVIDIA taking over and all of the chip stocks and global highs being set. Even Friday, we went up a little bit, but it was kind of a breather after the Thursday everything rally caused by NVIDIA. So don't forget that positive chip momentum and what happened with NVIDIA earnings. That is a lot of the background coming into this week and we do want to see if that momentum holds up. And now getting into your first key... Like I started off with the beginning of this video, we have a ton of economic data. The week is actually heavy when it comes to economic data, and this list right here is not everything. There's a lot of data from like Chicago PMI to Dallas Fed that I didn't put on here, but the main event of this week, it's going to be the PCE. We get that on Thursday, but you're also going to get data regarding personal spending, ISM manufacturing, durable goods, GDP, pending home sales. I think tomorrow's new home sales and then even a lot of inflation numbers out of the Eurozone, Spain, Germany, and a couple of other areas. So this week has a ton of economic data. Remember two weeks ago, the CPI, we had a little bit of reaction, but lately the market has been caught up with these NVIDIA earnings, the AI hype, and how everything is still maintaining this broader picture of a no landing or soft landing scenario. So depending on how this data comes in, it'll be very interesting to to see if we get a reaction on equities or maybe it plays out how we saw last week where bonds get the reaction and then equities stay in their own little world. But there is a lot of events every single day that we're going to be able to respond to. There's also going to be a lot of Fed speakers. So if the data changes dramatically, maybe their speeches do. But like we said last week, a lot of their speeches have not been having an effect because they start off by saying, yes, we're going to cut rates. And then they repeat what they like or mainly don't like about about the recent data so we'll see if anything changes but there's definitely a lot of ammunition this week we'll see what actually hits that is your first key but now coming into key number two this is where I'm expecting a little bit of momentum to end out the week it is the end of February so it should bring some fireworks we're gonna have to deal with the seasonality of course but now you have earnings wrapped up there will be a couple more companies like Lowe's Dell TJ Maxx but now what we got to keep in mind is that the end of February one will get all of the movements of everything from pensions and cash funds as people try to balance around but 
ultimately the thing that I think is important now, we are about to enter into March. So this is big on a quarterly level, but now don't forget some of the biggest themes we said are going to probably dominate this year, and that is the policy shift of Powell and the election. Now as we are wrapping up earnings and getting into everything, I mean, if we do enter into March at the end of this week, I mean, it is what, next week you get into Super Tuesday, the biggest primaries, the election, that focus is going to be having a bigger effect now now moving forward again we're going to see what happens with the banks the funding programs even the fed and what they're bringing up as well as the fed meeting and then finally we're also going to get to deal with the seasonality out of march which is positive but then again february is supposed to be negative and it wasn't but we'll see how this all plays out but i think we're going to get a lot of action here to end the week a lot of things kind of coming into fruition we'll see how the market's feeling how people are feeling into this third month of the year and i think that's going to be setting up a lot so the final thing I'll end this with the bias is still to the upside for now. There was a chance to go and flip red. I don't think we're going to get that now after last week, but let's see if this momentum and the optimism for last week, if that really rubs off on this week. Otherwise, I think all of this data, the rest of the earnings, it may have a chance to get in the way, but for the most part, I think everybody is now saying, all right, what's the plan for March? What do we focus on next, baby? But Chattadonia, it should be very straightforward. We'll see where the market takes us near all-time highs but now let us get into the play so right off the bat maybe I don't want to grow up maybe I just don't want to let go but yeah I'm starting off the first play with an earnings play I know it's the end of earnings there is still a couple of companies so in this case I know Snowflake a lot of people like it in the chad I think even Jim Cramer likes it but then even Redfin we have this in our long term we got them at three dollars I think this will be a good one but on Friday I did decide to make some pre-earnings plays so this late in the earnings season we've been talking about it a lot of these premiums have been pricing in a lot we did end the streak. It was nine weeks in a row of a thousand percenters. We did not get to push it to 10. We did not get one last week, but a lot of you hit Palo Alto. I will be making a video about that. That was honestly amazing, but now coming into this week, there was a lot of plays, but it seems like the way I'm looking at it, all of the premiums are high. I'm not going to be playing too much. The way I'm looking at it, though, I am down to make some plays on the pre and post earnings. So Snowflake and Redfin, that's exactly what I did on Friday, and I decided to go for for next week plays and the main logic with this play I grab two of them I want to either sell out one or both of them before they report but both these I think uh the red fins March 15th nine dollar call I grabbed two of those at 20 cents I want to say those are two standard deviations but I know the snowflake I went further than two standard deviations just to get the cheap contracts but this is the first play watch these I do think these companies will move around a lot but like I'm saying here on the option chain coming in this late in the earnings season after all these moves, everything going on. A lot of these companies have been pricing in 10-15% for one standard deviation, so it's kind of expensive there unless there really is a big surprise. That's why I'm saying Palo Alto, that was one that was pricing in a lot, but then it actually moved a lot, and you still hit regardless. So that being said, I am going to be watching these plays. I am going to be going over a couple more earnings this week, so be on stream, but for the most part, if that premium is pricing in higher than like 10-12%, I'm probably going to look for the pre or the post earnings play so watch out for that watch out for snowflake and redfin that is play number one then play number two this was an interesting one on friday we had contracts last week they went up like three four hundred percent if you didn't sell them they expired worthless but pin duo duo and it's not no longer about their super bowl ad it is about the news they had on friday which has been reiterated over the past but there was claims about like legislators wanting to bring a bill to look at uh, pin duo duo or timu for their child labor practices so that was very negative news it caused a pretty big dump on friday we made a day trade on it but the way i'm looking at it you're going to be getting bad news from that a big drop after a big rally last week and then a bunch of china recovery headlines i think pin duo 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 is going to have a lot of good back and forth action this week. So made some good plays on the shares. Even some of those options, they could get a little bit jumpy, but going to be watching them this week, see which news really takes over and also what happens in China. I do still have some other China plays, but Pinduo Duo, this one's going to be interesting. My calls have now expired. We got out of the short on Friday, so we could start over fresh, but watch out for them. That is play number two. And then finally, play number three, baby. 
Cog T and the biotech. So we've been talking about this theme here. Earnings is wrapping up, but some people have been bringing up biotechs and really coming into the end of the quarter, end of the month, and then literally end of the first three months of the year here. There is a lot of FDA action. We even get to hear about some data that's come out. That's literally what's happened with Cog T. We made a play on that on Thursday. I did average down on it. I picked up 800 more shares as they fell to 740. So I am going to be watching that this week. But but there is going to be some high-risk, high-reward biotech plays. I have been looking over them. Maybe this is the next segment we go over on stream, but you do have to be careful. Watch all the other videos. We've definitely had some good and bad luck with the biotechs, but I am going to be watching them. There is a couple of plays that I've been eyeing, but Cog T made a play on this one on Friday. Going to be keeping my eyes open for a couple more of these plays, but that is play number three as far as everything else. I did make a couple of other plays on Friday, we did make some moves on SMCI. I got one for free. Then I put out some more money, and then I ended up losing on it. And then we had a bunch of options expire. So I think by end of this week or next week, since we're probably not going to be having too many crazy earnings plays, I'm going to go over, calculate all the balances for you. We'll see where we ended up on all of this. But besides that, I don't have any other crazy plays. Grab those puts on card on Friday. I did make a couple of flips on like weed stocks, and there was another flip that I did. I guess pinned to a duo on Friday, but other than that, going to be riding things out. We've been talking a lot about emotions and even patience, and I think this market and end of this week or end of this month with all the fireworks, I'm sure it's going to put a lot to the test, but now we see where it all guides us. Get ready, and I would be prepared for a long year as we now wait for March, which is going to give us a lot, or at the very least, a new SCP and Powell, but chat that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydra Healthy ready to go. Make sure post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shining. And I need you to remember, read the good word. Get some identity, baby. Find out what the meaning is. You have more to life than just doing nothing, my friend. Trust me, you are here for a purpose. But, Chad, don't forget that. Drink that water. Stay hydrated. Stay healthy. Get ready for another week mentally, physically. Get Go to sleep early. Be at Wusa. Be at peace. You know what I'm saying? But, Chad, that's it. I love you. Have a wonderful evening. And horn.